today I'm going to show you how to do the chevron stitch on one of these. You can also use your nifty knitter flat loom as well. Um, just the pegs will be a little bit wider than you see here. So the chevron stitch I'm going to do um, on 25 pegs, okay, with the wide. And uh, this is what the outcome would be. Okay, so this is the chevron stitch. As you know, people that do crochet, this is a very f famous stitch to do as well with crochet. But now we can do it on a knitting board, which is awesome. Do it on the front board and the back board, which is a thicker fabric that I've done here. You can also do this stitch with just one side of the board. Um, you can also do this on a round loom um, doing a flat panel. So this stitch has multiple uses. There's no excuse that you can't do it. Um, you can do it on many looms. It's obviously on an angle, so it's increases and decreases that you'll be using, as well as um, you can see the stitch more when you change your color. So what I'm doing today is I'm trying to make this little project. So what I, I'm doing is actually is a gestured hat. So I'm just one half of the gesture hat uh, for a little child. So I'm working on the second half. So that's what it would look like. So what I've done is I cast on 25 pegs. It's just called a double-sided stock net stitch. What you do is you cast on normally. You put, um, I am using both boards, okay? Um, if you're using a flat panel, then you'll just concentrate on here. What you'll do is you'll start your um, e-wrapping from peg 1 to peg 25, okay? You do this a couple of times so you have like a straighter edge um, and a clean edge when you're working on a flat panel. And basically the steps are the same. As long as you have 25 pegs casted on. I'm going to do a demonstration on the double knitting board. Okay, it gives it, a, again, it gives the fabric more thickness. And it also um, has a double pattern, so on each side. So whatever this side is, this side is as well. So what I'm going to do is a double stock knit stitch. So if we go here, for instance, let's say I... Uh, put my first loop here. I'm gonna go up, skip a peg, go up. So basically, we're skipping pegs. Every other peg, we want to do this. Every other stitch. And as you become familiar with this stitch, you can go faster and the work that you do will comp be completed faster. Like that little half part of the hat took me about a day. Okay, and what I do is I hold my string down, my yarn, sorry, I'm gonna leave. And then what I do is I take my hook and then what you do is you just yarn over. One loop over the other, like so. So this is the initial startup, okay? You yarn over. Again, what you do to one side, you also do to the other. So I'm just doing the front board first. Okay, and what I like to do is I like to run my pinky down and lower my stitches so they don't pop off the pegs. They usually don't, but sometimes they do. And I flip my board and I do the same thing on the other side. Start yarning over. And what I'm using is 100% acrylic yarn. I'm not really a fan of acrylic. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna start our chevron stitch. So I'm gonna flip the board over again. And what I do is, um, I like to mark my middle first, okay? And how I do that is so. I'm going to count 13 stitches from 
the first pike here, okay? So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You can put a piece of tape here or a uh, stitch marker. But what I'll do is the 13th stitch I'll leave on. And what we're going to do is the two adjacent pegs. So number 14, you just pick up the peg, uh, the loop, sorry, and you just flip, slip it over to peg 13. And peg number 11, the uh, 12, you're going to pick it up and slip it over to 13. So now you have three loops on um, peg 13, okay? Now I'm going to go to the far end, um, which is peg 25. I'm going to pick up peg 24. I'm just going to pick it up and slip it on peg 25. So now you have peg 24 that's empty. Okay, and you have peg 14 that's empty and peg 12 that's empty. Then I'm going to go to the first peg and I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to go to peg number two. I'm going to pick up the stitch and slip it on peg number one. Okay, so you have two stitches on peg number one, three stitches on peg 13, and two stitches on peg 25. So now what we're going to do is our increases and decreases, okay? That's what causes the slant of the pattern like so, the slant, the slant, the slant, and that slant. And that is caused by decreasing, okay, and increasing. So we're going to go to peg number two, and what we're gonna do is basically carry peg number two, uh, three to peg number two, like so. And then we're gonna do the same thing to the next five. So it's one, two, three, four, five, carry it over. And then I'm gonna go to the middle stitches here and I'm just gonna bring over these stitches and bring them one over, okay? So pick up the stitch, carry it over one. Do the same thing to the ones that are adjacent. Like so. Like that. Like that. like that okay now we have two pegs that are empty okay now whatever we did to this side we're going to do to the other side here and we're going to carry over the pegs over like that and then these ones we're going to move over So now you have two empty pegs there as well. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do increases because now we have to fill in the empty pegs here. And how you do that is you place your board like so. Okay, see these little loops here that we actually yarned over on the, uh, the previous step? We're going to grab them like that. I'm just going to carry it over to the first peg. And then we're going to carry this loop here. So the one that's adjacent to the empty peg, we're going to pick up that loop. I'm just going to pull it slightly and carry it over. So that's how you increase. And we're going to do the same thing to the empty pegs here. We're going to pick up this loop. So it's the one that's adjacent to the empty, the, the loop that's adjacent to the empty peg. We're going to grab it from the middle here. And we're going to pull it and the same thing here on the other side and we're just going to pull it gently and that's my that my friends is how you increase so whatever you do to this side of the board you have to do to the other side of the board it's totally up to you that's if you want your pattern to repeat on the back